Um, this screencast is going to show how to use SparkView along with the Smart Cart with the uh, propelling fan attached to the top. First thing we want to do is open up the SparkView. Um, not the morning announcements, <laughs> SparkView. Um, and the appearance will look a little different to you. This is now version 4.0. Yours will pop, probably upgrade to this. First thing you want to do is hit sensor data. And with your smart car nearby, um, you'll be able to pair your device. So here we have cart uh, 316, 263. I will pair the cart. And it is now uh, connected. Uh, we're going to open up one of these templates, but we're going to modify it anyhow. So I'm just going to uh, click uh, graph here. Notice that everything has um, lined up uh, my uh, sensors that are on the smart cart. Uh, we're only going to look at position and velocity, so we could um, uncheck uh, the others. Uh, and we're going to choose graph. All right. Uh, but we need to build a second page in order to control the fan. So in the upper left-hand corner here, this plus is going to allow us to build a new page. And we are going to choose this template right here with a small screen on the left and a large screen on the right. Okay. And what we'll be able to do on this left side is choose the little icon of the fan. And we will now have a slider bar that controls the thrust. Positive thrust is forward. Negative thrust will make the fan go in the opposite direction to propel it backwards. Okay. Um, if you toggle the on and off, you can manually control the fan. If you choose auto, it will automatically turn on the fan when the experiment starts recording data. And when you pause the data, right, data gathering, the fan will automatically turn off. Let's keep this on. Um, then you don't have to worry about toggling it on and off manually. In the right-hand window, we're going to open a graph. And we have to choose our measurement to put on the y-axis. First off, we will choose position. You do that by just clicking select a measurement. Right. But we are going to create a second graph right beneath this one of velocity versus time. And if we come across to the bottom here, all right, all the way to the right, there is a option called add plot area. We will click that. Also choose select measurement. And here we will choose velocity. Now we have two graphs right on top of each other sharing the same time axis in which we will record data. Okay. So if you settle upon a thrust, this goes from negative 100 all the way to positive 100. I'll set this thing pretty high, say around you know close to 80 or so. Okay, it really doesn't matter what the value is. All right, 81.4. The moment I go to start collection of data, the fan will turn on, our data collection will commence, um, and once the cart has gone a, a good distance, I will then stop uh, and then analyze the data. So here it goes. Okay, so I hit stop before I ran out of room, all right? Um, and you can see that we get two graphs here. First thing you'd like to do in order to see things more clearly is hit the scale to fit option and that will kind of blow up our screen and focus in on our data. Okay, so notice here our purple data is in um, is the position. Our green data is the velocity. Uh, so there's a lag time until the fan turned on. So things really started to happen at one and a half seconds. Notice the velocity graph is pretty linear, right? Where the cart was picking up velocity, it was accelerating forward, picking up speed, okay? So from what we've learned already, if we look at that data, 
All right. Remember, we can select data and with the green being active, right, the velocity data, if I choose this data right here, okay, I have the option to put a linear fit through it. Okay, when I do that, I can kind of slide this off to the side, all right, and our slope here will give, uh, will give us the value of the acceleration because it is the rate at which we're picking up uh, velocity, right, change in velocity over change in time. Okay, so that's, that's one thing we can do. A second thing with the velocity time graph is if we look at the area beneath this, it will give us our displacement. Okay, now if we look at our position time graph, we notice that the car um, goes kind of through this, there's this curvy trend, but notice it's a little bit more than one and a half meters. So if I go to calculate the area beneath this graph, we can do that by hitting the Greek letter sigma here, right? Which is the option show and hide statistics. If I choose that option, come all the way down here to the bottom and choose area, hit OK. It will provide the area beneath this selected region. And notice it's slightly above 1.5, which corresponds with the position time graph on how far the object went. Okay, so there's two big pieces of information from the velocity time graph. The slope gives us our acceleration. The area beneath the velocity time graph, which in this case looks like a triangle, gives us our displacement. If we now move up to the position time graph and make it active by choosing the purple data, I will once again select the data in which the experiment pretty much started. Okay. And in this region, we have a non-linear fit. Okay, so when I did that, we were given some options up there. Here's linear fit, and then the other one on the right is any type of curve fit, including linear and others, okay? And as we've learned here the last few days, a quadratic equation is pretty much controlling the, um, the shape of this position time graph. So if we choose quadratic fit, we'll get a nice curve that pretty much goes through the data, okay, running up and to the right here, because this thing was getting faster. So this was curving upward, meaning the slope was increasing, and that's what makes it curve up, okay? If you look at these um, coefficients, um, they stand for some special things, uh, especially this uh, A value here. This A value is not the acceleration. It happens to be half the acceleration. It matches our position function that we've been using the last few days. Notice the value here, 0.184 is pretty much half of the acceleration. So 0.184 is essentially half of this 0.362. Okay. So there's a lot of information embedded in these two graphs um, with the simple acceleration of the cart across the floor uh, via the fan. Okay. It, as always, if you want to clear the data, right, you can, um, whoops, wrong thing, right? You can go down to manage data, which is over here on your experiment tools, right? So you can manage the runs. Uh, you can delete the last run. All right. So if I wanted to, I clear this all out. Say I wanted to do the experiment over again and crank it up to 100. All right. I could rerun this thing. 